Hello everyone, this is uh, Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau and I'm pleased to introduce uh, Alex Lenderman back on Chess24. Uh, we're very happy to have him here on a, on a big day of chess and uh, you know a lot of people are home and don't have too much to do so this is a this is the perfect thing to do Alex welcome I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you talk and go off but I uh, I hope you have a nice time and uh, and that some people get a chance to give you a tough game thank you Pascal thank you for the warm introduction so welcome everyone this is Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman happy to be doing a banter blitz after a nice peaceful round at the candidates and um, hopefully I'll be able to play today for around uh, two hours so it'll be a relatively long session because the games were relatively quick and um wait a second it says i disconnected that's odd uh mm -hmm. it's uh huh okay I is is something with my connection huh this is a little bit strange uh hmm. alex at least oh. i can still hear you so i think I yeah don't i don't know, know what happened maybe with... you got disconnected from the website yeah, so I don't know. I mean, my connection's still fine. Okay, let me let me challenge him again. Okay, so let's. I think it was five minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's give him another, another a challenge. Let's let's try to play this person. Let's see if he accepts it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because otherwise it would be un, unfair to. Okay, so now I'll be white, unfortunately for for him. Um, so I'll just, uh, I guess I'll have to play white in that case, but what to do? Okay, let's play, let's play three. I play that opening quite a lot in, um, in Rapid and Blitz. Just a slow, quiet system, which has served me well, especially in Blitz and Rapid Chess, because I have very easy development. Okay, f6 is met by d4 in order to prevent black from controlling the center with e5. <clears throat> okay, now we continue the development. Bishop d3, castles, and at some point, c4 will be a very important move because that way it will be very hard for black to get an e5. So white will put some pressure on the d5 square, and black will need to figure out how he develops. I have two ideas. Um, so now the choice, bishop takes or pawn takes? Probably pawn takes is better to increase my control over the center. Okay, so let's play knight e4, just improving my pieces. So I think I should be a little bit better because um, he has a few weaknesses. Like e5 will be weak here. But of course, it's not entirely that easy. Mm, okay, let's take that as well. He can take with a pawn, he can take with the other piece. Okay, let's play bishop e4, kind of preparing for black to go bishop g4. And if he trades queens, I think my end game is uh, slightly better. I have two bishops. e5 is, I think, weaker than c4. e5 is at least easier to attack. So... And I have an open file. I have a slight lead in development. So I think I have some initiative. Okay, bishop takes, takes two bishops. Okay, rook d7, of course. Now knight of five might have been a mistake because, or maybe not, knight d4. So which one do I take or do I even take at all? That's a good question. If I take on c6, bc6, okay, that could be some rook end game or knight takes c6. If I go bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes b7, it's also up a pawn end game. Um, if I go bishop d5, rook b8, and it's not clear what I'm doing. Okay, so it's a little bit of a choice here. Okay, let's let's take this one. I think the bishop on f3 is very strong. 
and then my bishop can get to d5 and uh, that would defend my important past pawn. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not sure what to do here. Okay, do I trade or not trade? Maybe rook d5 is, okay, let's trade. Hard to say. Okay, I need to make a loft now to safeguard my king. Let's go bishop d5. Rook b2, I'm thinking rook e1, attacking e5. Well, he goes there. Okay, that seems... Okay, so let's play rook e1. Yeah, now white should be... This should be technically winning because uh, now he's losing another one, I think. And, oh, but that's uh, a trick I foresaw. His idea was bishop c4, knight f3, forking, but of course I have the intermezzo. So he played well for a while, but then he made a couple of uh, mistakes. All right, so let's see who we got. Let's play now a uh, tough, tough opponent, three minute against Bogdan Jermasia. So good luck, Bogdan Jermasia. <clears throat> All right, uh, 2,500, so should be a tough, challenging game. Knight of three, g6. Okay, so let's play e4. Let's play a uh, beard system. Bishop c4, queen e2, I think is a somewhat reliable system for white. Very solid, very harmonious. Let's see what he does. Knight c6. Maybe I can even play e5 here. And... Uh, get control over the center and uh, the knight has to choose where he goes so maybe slightly awkward for a block i know that in a similar kind of position zviara zoria with white beat hikaru nakamura so at the u.s championship uh, two years ago so that was uh, definitely goes to show that it's a, a venomous system could be hard for black to play and now this is especially hard to play because i can play now the question is knight c3 first okay let's play knight c3 first with the idea of 94 and uh well h3 first we have to kick away the knight so that e5 doesn't hang and now we'll go 94. so white is definitely much better here but okay still not so easy Okay, let's play a4 to stop b5. That's his main source of counterplay, probably. And then I want to play rook d2, rook d1, and double up on that d file. And black, meanwhile, has shortage of moves here. So it's a pretty difficult position. I'm thinking whether I should play g4 or not. Uh, then he goes 97. I can also play knight f6 because then it's very awkward for him to defend that c7 pawn. Because knight d6 loses the pawn and otherwise I'm threatening g4, which would also win the pawn. So, yeah, this looks quite good. I can take the pawn, I think. And now b6 is also probably falling. So, And he also has to watch out for that f6 pawn because I can always play g4 and. Uh, the knight moves and then queen d2, queen h6, and things like that. So it's okay. He tries this. All right. So that makes sense. He wants to go queen c6. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good move. Probably the only move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what to do here? It's a good question. Don't want to think too long. Okay, let's just go bishop d3. Uh, Queen c6, just bishop e5, probably. Yeah, I mean, I probably have something better, but it's hard to find in a short time constraint. But at least here I'm threatening b4, trapping the knight, so he needs to spend another move to defend that, which this move does because he has knight c4. And uh, okay, so what if I take that knight and play queen d2, wondering, or queen e3? 
It looks very dangerous for him. Maybe it's just mate, actually. Like I've mentioned, that pawn on f6 will, will let itself know, oh, but the problem is I can't go knight g5 yet because of the, the mate. So I guess I have to play this move first. Okay, he goes queen e4. <laughs> I can also play rook d4. He plays g5 then. Okay, it's not so easy still. Okay, let's play here. Queen e4, then I go rook d4. And then he can't move the queen because of rook h4 or queen takes h7. So rook d6 should win, I think. Because he can't really hold everything, keep, contain all my threats. So like I said, that pawn on f6 is, is very powerful. And usually these pawns, pawn wedges near opponent's king, h6, f6 are very powerful. So even if you don't see how right away, usually leads to a very powerful position. That's why this line is so dangerous, because you often get the pawn to e5. All right, so let's play now Bateman. Five-minute game. All right. Uh, good luck, Mr. Bateman. Okay, now we're going to get a black game. So let's see what happens. So, okay, Bateman will play a French against him. D4, D5, Knight D2. Knight D2, let's play C5, one of the main lines. Knight F3. Okay, let's play Knight F6. That's uh, CD is certainly also a possible move, but I always like Knight F6 here with the idea of ED, Knight takes D5. I think it leads to somewhat interesting positions. Bishop e5, I haven't seen so much in this particular case. I guess if I go bishop d7, takes, knight takes, e5, knight e4. Yeah, that should be completely fine. Because he's just helping me develop pieces, and he's not creating an isolated pawn for me because I'm taking with the knight. Yeah, and here I can just play knight e4, I think. Because if takes takes knight g5, I can take on d4, and he also has problems with the e5 pawn after, let's say, queen a5 check. So, like, if knight takes, pawn takes, queen a5 sometimes. So now he's thinking, I think he might want to take anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. Takes cd. Yeah, now if queen d4, queen a5. And uh, at the very least, I'm equal. Although well, I'm, I'm probably not better, but this is going to be some uh, end game which I'm going to have to grind. Okay, well, he sacks the pawn. Okay, let's see if I can. I could probably take this as well. If I was him, I would have taken on d4 because here he's right now down two pawns. He can easily get one pawn back right now, but I don't see how he's going to get back both pawns, and I don't see how he gets initiative. So this looks a little bit. Risky, although of course he might have some initiative, but I don't really believe in it in this position because I'm just one move away from castling and uh, I don't really see his his threats. Now I'm gonna go knight g6 with the tempo, which is usually a good idea. So now I could castle, but I can also play more ambitiously with f5, which I think maybe wins a piece, and I don't really see how he. How he defends it. Yeah, so I'll just play f5. I think this move is just winning a piece, actually. So bishop g3 was looks like a blunder. I mean, he again, he will have compensation for the piece, but a piece is still a piece. So at this point, it should be pretty much winning. Yes, now he's thinking, like, he decided to give up the piece like this. Okay, but I'm just going to take that, go queen d5, and of course, I'm happy to trade queens, being up a piece, and I'm going to start offering some trades. And, uh, and this is now just a simple technical task. Guarding the five pawn. Okay, I'm just going to go here. He wants to trade rooks. I'm all for it. Okay, let's take here. Okay, let's take this as well. Okay, he's threatening. A, he's making a threat, but it's very simple to deal with. 
g6 simply. Now I'm just going to bring the queen back. Up a piece on the pawn. Yeah, so it's uh, it's more or less lost. And he resigned. All right, so, so far, good start for, for me. <clears throat> All right, let's see who's next. Let's play John 1611. <laughs> All right, good luck, John 1611. Okay, so I'm black again. So let's see what uh, happens. All right, so let's see if he's here. Um, or wait, or is it something with my connection? I hope not. Uh, John 1611 from Poland, are you here? Um, uh, huh. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's, is it my connection or is it, uh, or is she just not here? Okay, I guess I'm going to have to abort it. If it's, if it's a my problem, then I'll make sure I play him at later time. Okay, so let's abort that. Okay, so let's try. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot play model, Modly <coughs> from Germany because Modly is not a premium member. So that's going to be a reminder for all of you. Try to become a premium member because then you have all these benefits you can play banter blitz with all the gms including even people like magnus carlson sometimes and peter swidler and people like that <laughs> as well as uh, get amazing video content on chess 24. i'm a gm and I, I have to say i also watch a lot of the videos on chess 24 and learn a lot from them um and there's and there's also Besides that, there's also opening clinic where you can ask uh, Jan Gustafsson, an opening expert, a question. So uh, there are so many great features on Chess24, um, all for a cheaper rate than you might pay for one or two hours for, uh, for just one private lesson. So definitely highly recommend you all to become a premium, members, premium member because uh, I can only play premium members. So here we have Frankie Fingers from Bulgaria, and he's quite good, as you can see, 2518. And he's playing the kind of one of the most popular systems against the English defense with a3, d5. The point of a3 is to stop bishop b4. And uh, I faced this system many times because I play English defense quite a lot especially in blitz but sometimes even in classical i think it's the system is is better than its reputation for example georg mayer is a relatively frequent practitioner practitioner of the system <laughs> so yeah you usually get very interesting positions in this particular line especially when they go a3 d5 because a3 d5 is a very ambitious approach it's kind of losing too tempy but white is saying if you cannot punish me right away i'm just gonna have this beautiful space advantage so the onus is on me obviously to create quick dynamic counterplay here and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to undermine his defenses so i can really attack the d5 form so that's what I'm trying to do here. And I think I'm probably doing okay. If he takes on d5, I'm thinking whether or not I can take on d5. If I take on d5, he goes knight somewhere, knight c3, queen d3, king h8. It's a little complicated, but maybe it works. Because e2 hangs in, in, the, in the end with check in some lines. So. And okay, if he doesn't take, I think I'm definitely fine because then I go knight e4, or if he takes on f6, I just take back. b2 is attacked. So it's kind of a difficult choice for him. And I'm happy that I'm getting a time edge. Okay, so it looks like my internet was fine. It looks like that John from Poland just unfortunately did not show up. So that's another reminder. Make sure if you challenge, try to be there. I'm going to try to 
play in order of how people challenged me so that you guys have a rough idea of where you stand in line so that um, you can kind of know when to expect to play. The, the reason I'm doing it in this order is so that, you know, we hopefully get less aborts of what happened earlier. That's kind of my my main reasoning behind this. Okay, so 91, but that seems a bit passive. Now for sure I have a good position. I'm gonna take on C3. I'm gonna go queen f6, rook e8. My pieces are all very good. Even my bishop on b7 has future on the a6 f1 diagonal. And uh, for sure my position is quite good here. Okay, so let's see what to do. I can play a four. I can also play a5. f4 seems very tempting so that I don't let him consolidate with e3 and uh, secure his e2 pawn. I'm going to try to apply pressure on the e2 pawn. That's my plan. Because I look at e2 as a little bit of a target here. So let's see. Let's play. Okay, let's play bishop e5. I'm not sure if bishop c5 was better, but I think his knight on d4 is quite a good piece, so I don't really mind trading it off. Okay, let's see what to do next. Okay, I guess I'll... Okay, I'll... Mm, okay, let's play a5. Probably doesn't hurt. I Maybe I'm not better yet, but... It does look like my position is slightly easier to play. Next time I want to go to e7, rook e8. Yeah, let's all oh, rook e7, d6. I have to be careful. Okay, so let's see what else. Okay, let's just take it because you cannot take with the queen because of the a2 pawn. So now this is uh, d5 pawn will be quite weak actually. So, you know, we each have a couple of weaknesses. Um, my c7 pawn is weak, but his e2 pawn is weak. And um, and his uh, d5 pawn is also weak. So, And I have more time, so feeling optimistic here. OK, e4, because now probably should take on Basonki. I can't let the pawn stabilize here. OK, let's take this as well. So now if the idea is a rook takes, then I take on d5. If king takes, oh, okay, I still take on d5, right? Because I don't think he can take on c7 because then I start attacking him with many various ways. A like queen of three, for example, or queen h1. <clears throat> okay, so he offers a queen trade. Oh, but I'm not going to trade queens, I think. <clears throat> I think I have a very strong attack. Or do I? Maybe it's not, maybe I overestimated it, but okay, it looks still very promising. Yeah, it has to be very good. Maybe it's not winning on the spot, but okay, this is up a pawn. Massive attack on the king, so this has to be really dangerous. Uh, but how exactly do I, how exactly do I win? That's the question. Okay, I don't see a knockout right away, <clears throat> so I'll just play h6 see what he does it seems useful no matter what making a loft so for now i'll just uh, play slowly he still has a very hard time coming up with the move okay queen c2 i think i planned uh okay so yeah i can go queen g2 now and then i go rook f2 and uh is that winning yeah i think so queen c7 queen e4 and then queen e3 is made Yes, this is mate. Yeah, this is mate. Okay, so far so good. I'm pretty happy with the way I'm playing so far. Um, all right, so let's see who's who's next. All right, let's play Torque Madila now. Next game, let's we've played some high rated recently. Let's play uh, low rated this time, fifteen hundred. All right, good luck, Torque Madilla uh, from Spain. 
Okay, let's play again a French. Um, kind of going to be a thematic day today with Frenches and English defenses, because we've mostly seen with Sam Shankland a lot of Sicilians, with Ferruja, we've seen a lot of E45s. Today, we're going to make it French and English defense, which we don't really see that much. So we're going to try to, we're going to see it today. Okay, so this is an advanced variation of the French, but with an extra tempo for, for black. So this obviously has to be good for me. But I don't know if it's better for me yet, but uh, clearly this has to be good. Okay, and now already I'm applying pressure on D4, so this seems like uh, white is just not in time to protect the space. Knight takes D4. If bishop e3, I can always take on f3 with check. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start winning pawns. I should not take on e5 right away because then he has some bishop xd5, rook e1. So I'm not gonna even calculate that. I'm just going to keep it simple, especially in a blitz game, because this is just simply extra pawn, actually extra two pawns at this point without pretty much any compensation. So yeah, so it was an opening that gone bad for white because yeah, normally you're not supposed to play D3 and then E5 and then D4. It's uh, kind of, he mixed up two systems. You either have to play the King's Indian attack or the advanced, uh, but not both at the same time. That's a lesson for all of us. It's important when we play a certain opening, try to not mix two systems. Because usually I see that a lot in my students' games at the lower level, under 2,000, let's say, that if you mix two systems, that's an easy way to get in trouble out of the opening. It's very important to have a logical sequence to your moves in the opening and in the middle game. And in general, when you're playing and you're planning, it's important that your moves have logical connections. Um, so just general advice for all of you. When you're thinking about what to do, yeah, at this point, uh, white also blundered the piece, so the game is at this point more or less over. So he will the game still continuing, but uh, at this point, um, the result is not in doubt as long as I don't disconnect or or flag. But I still have lots of time, so. So I'm going to play quickly to try to finish this game quickly and uh, be able to play more games. Okay, so he resigned. Uh, okay, let's play a new game. Who's next? Okay, chess. No, actually, yeah, chess cadet, premium member. Uh, 2496. Okay, so now we see some high rateds, two in a row. So let's play some high rateds again. Time for some challenge again. After a low rated. Play very high rate. Okay, finally they gave me white against chess cadet from Germany. Okay, so good luck, chess cadet. Uh, hopefully, it will be a very interesting game. Okay, let's just play a uh, quiet system against the Dutch this time. G3. Okay, he decided to play the Stonewall Dutch. Obviously, a very solid system. He's playing very quickly. Okay, queen c2, maybe. But I think white should be usually better in these structures because I traded off my bishop. But okay, if I take e d e d five is not good, so that's kind of I'm hoping that this is just very good for me. But maybe it's not so special actually. But usually I think that with the pawn on e six like that, and I have this file, I think white is usually doing quite well. But maybe it's I could be overestimating this. It's possible. Okay, is my rook getting trapped? No, 98, I have rook e7. So I don't think so. Yeah, knight d7, knight g5. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I have some initiative here. If I don't, then he will he will probably be okay. But I'm hoping that there is at least some initiative that he needs to solve some answer some questions 
Actually, I think that was a stupid move, rook c6, because now he can just play rook c8. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try a4. So I have two plans, either knight b5 or, or if he does this, I play this. And let's see what happens. Okay, knight a2 maybe. Yeah, if rook c2, knight b4. But okay, he can just play bishop b7. Yeah, I'll probably, yeah, it's probably nothing special. I, I guess it's just equal. But can you play rook c4? Yeah, and actually, yeah, he missed the e3, rook a4. Rook a4 was the key move. Okay, I have to just trade rooks, I think, here. Because uh, I think he should have tried rook c4 again, by the way, because now at least I have the c5 square. And I do think he has a not a great bishop. Okay, let's snake shred on blunder that knight. Okay, do I go knight f3? That's the question. I don't really want to open up that bishop. That's the thing. Maybe knight h3. Mm, okay, let's play knight h3 and see what happens. He can play knight t2, of course. Okay, then I'll just play b4 and stabilize. I kind of want to play knight h3, so I can play knight f4, or maybe I can play f3. I mean, I might be a little bit better, but it's going to be hard to convert, so I need to play quickly. Because use my old friend the clock, hopefully, to my advantage. Okay, so let's see what to do. Let's play f3. Okay, can I play knight g5? I think it works. Or it doesn't. Oh yeah, you can play king f6. Yeah, take my king f6. Wait. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not working. You can now take an h7, then I get trapped. Annoying. What to do? Okay, I guess I'll have to play before. Yeah, this might be a fortress of some sort. What to do? G5, okay, let's play, uh, let's play three. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to win this, if it's even, because I'll have to just maneuver quite a lot and hopefully I, I don't block my position too much. E5, okay, let's take it. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that was a good move. Okay, bishop f1 maybe. I would say this is so far my toughest game by far. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Which, am I just worse now? He's, that's knight c6. Oh, man. Oh, that's not good. That's not good, man. This is, this is bad news. Yeah, this, is, this guy outplayed me. In the end game. Okay, I guess I, I'll just. Can I play for a win here? He's oh okay. He's playing for a win. Good. Yeah, I was I was thinking about playing for a win myself, but yeah, I, I guess I can try to flag him here. Actually, maybe I'm not. Oh, he he just blundered. Yeah, but I think my position was not worse here. I had a good night against the bad bishop, so. I think this is, right now I'm just gonna win like this, sack a piece and penetrate with the king. Yeah, so this was a close game, but uh, yeah, I was gonna probably play for a win anyway because of the time, but yeah, he, he was very ambitious for playing for a win without any time playing low on time, this was going to be hard to to win this. Alex, I just came on for a second. Um, I uh, for, for a second, I was actually showing my board because I, I promised a kid that I would play a game, and somehow when I accepted, instead of following you, it went to my board. But I, I changed it pretty quickly, so they still saw the end of your game, but they also <laughs> saw the beginning of mine. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll take a, this opportunity to ask you some questions anyway. Uh, what... Uh, you know, what have you seen in a candidate so far that has been of uh, interest to you? And are you rooting for somebody? Uh, are you rooting maybe for the American player or for somebody else? Or 
Well, first of all, to answer your second question, there is one only one thing I'm honestly rooting for, for the tournament to be finished. Uh, you know, I think that would be great for chess if the tournament is able to be completed without something bad happening in terms of the uh, pandemic. So that's my main uh, thing that I'm rooting for. I'm rooting against coronavirus winning, basically, in this tournament. That's Other a... than that, I don't really have to say a specific preference of who exactly wins, but I'm sure whoever wins, you know, shows a very strong character, shows very good nerves because it's very, very hard, obviously, to play under the current conditions when nothing is uncertain and you don't know what's going to happen the next day. So I think whoever wins really will deserve it because that means they're mentally really, really strong. So I'm, I'm just hoping for a good fight and we'll see what happens. Uh, to answer your, your first question, I would say what was what stood out to me so far is that how resilient people are, <clears throat> even when they fell into prep. Because, for example, in the, in the first game, Yanni Pomnyshev fell into dangerous preparation for Anish Giri, and he was able to navigate through the complications just fine, and then even was able to outplay Anish Giri. And uh, I would say the game where Dingo won against Fabi, especially having started 0-2, and then was hit by this prep, novelty, and opponent playing quickly in a sharp position, and to still be able to, after all this hardship, after all these... Um, after all the stress to still come back and play so well and even win that game i mean to me that just shows an amazing uh, will to win amazing character and uh, i think that's what we've seen so far like the fighting spirit like the you know not not willing to give in so easily and just such strong mental um toughness because i know for myself for example when i if i would deal with such prep i might have just collapsed against fabio which i've done many times but Kudos to Ding for showing that amazing perseverance starting 0-2 and uh, being able to play such a good game under such circumstances. Yeah, it's actually like th this preparation that they've had. And you can still start the next game, I guess, right? Are, are you uh, you waiting or? No, no, I could. Yeah, I, I, I just I wasn't sure if you wanted me to talk while I was uh, playing. Oh. Yeah, but I can definitely play next game. You can probably start anyway. Um, yeah. The. Um... Yeah, the, let's the, let's let's start a fourteen hundred for now so that we can talk and it's sure. okay. Yeah, yeah let, the, let's the, do that. Uh, I'll skip the twenty six fifty nine for now. I'll play him next game while you're talking to me. No, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, the level of preparation is is kind of kind of insane in some of these games. Like, uh, I mean, it, it's just I don't know I don't know how one goes about finding like these ideas, like the move. Uh, the move e5 in the Slav, and also the move rook c1 that Anish Giri played in the first game, like, that are just kind of really unnatural, and obviously they're moves that are, like, they're not really suggested by the computer, which is the point, you know? Yeah. Um, they're, uh, because they're too far down, they're too far down the three, the tree, I guess, they're just not, like, they're really not obvious, and they're also, I mean, it's not clear that they're necessarily good moves, but they... They're better than they look, and so. Well, I've, I know Fabi has a you know very good practical play, and I can definitely speak for that because I've played Fabi uh, three times in classical serious games. Uh, I have a very bad score against him, three zero, and basically in all three games, it's almost like I had no chance. I just was never even in the game um, because he just got me on very deep prep, practical prep. That's the key. He has very good practical prep where, you know, it's like pretty much something that I wouldn't have analyzed, but something that's, from a practical standpoint, you very dangerous to play over the board, especially when he's analyzed and I didn't. Like a perfect example is my game I played against him in 2016, uh, US Championship, uh, where I was white and he played some line and he said, it's not a good line after the game, but I just did not navigate that at all in an unknown position. And I played the game like a, like a 2000, maybe 2200 or, or whatever. I mean, I just played all the wrong things. So, and you know, you can pretty much say similar things about all my games in this five. 2018, US Championship, 2019. And in all these games, he's played some ideas, some move that I haven't analyzed before. And in all these games, I reacted very badly to something I haven't analyzed. So he's very good at finding these practical tries um, um, of ideas that um, pretty much, you know, you you haven't uh, analyzed he he knows he has a feeling of what someone else has analyzed and what they haven't and uh, it's just and he you know if you even if it's a worse position for you 
but if it's complicated, but if you've analyzed an opponent didn't, it makes a big difference. And that's the difference between, let's say, me and Geary, because I'm a 2600. So let's say when I don't know my position, I might play like a 2400 sometimes, right? And whereas, um, and that really makes a big difference where someone like Ding, he might still play like a 2700, even yeah. if he doesn't know because of his, uh, and that's, and then that made a huge difference. So I can definitely say that five is probably what, one of the best, if not the best, in terms of practical preparation, not purely the, not just theoretical preparation, but specifically practical preparation, something you've specifically mentioned. Yeah, because I, I guess the um, I guess the ones that are considered like the best preparation maybe maybe is Geary, like with the deepest stuff. You know, maybe even know. someone like Peter Leko or Boris Gelfand, but it's uh, it's not as scary because you know usually it's like gonna equalize even if you make a mistake, you'll be able to get a draw. But like the preparation that Fabi has, if you make some mistakes, you're just gonna go down in flames. Yeah. Right? So I guess that's the difference. Yeah, I was actually I was actually amazed that in both games, like both the games that you mentioned, which I think are, are really good good to mention, um, the um, you know the, the players in both cases, like Nepomnishi against Giri and Ding against um, Ding Liren against Karwana, they both like actually went for sharp. Like they didn't you know face the surprise. And just kind of try to play it safe. They face the surprise. Right, D65. Yeah, because Ding mentioned that that was at first like something he thought about, but then he just was not afraid. It was like fearless yeah, play. Because it's, I, was I guess he, like, sometimes, sometimes we say like he's playing the, he was willing to go the principled way, even mm-hmm. if it was, uh, even if it was dangerous, you know, and that's pretty admirable for, for a tournament like that. So Yeah, especially if you're starting 0-2. Although on one hand, on the other hand, you know, when you're starting 0-2, maybe it sometimes could be a bit easier to just take some risks. But of course, yeah, I mean, I'm, there are two trains of thought. Some people say that if you're starting badly, you have to just continue going all out and continue trying to kind of get back. But then there's a Soviet school of thinking that I think uh, someone like Sergei Koryakin maybe follows more that if you start off badly you have to just consolidate get yourself back in a good mood and and yeah. then play so i think it's just a matter of personality but it just goes to show ding is mentally super strong i mean maybe one of the strongest and i think fabi is as well and that's why besides magnus you know these are the two that are labeled the favorites because of the mental strength because everybody else is also really really good at chess right some yeah. like Grishuk and other people, but when it comes to mentally, you know, maybe these two have a, just a slight edge over the others in that regards. So let, because you mentioned Grishuk, and I, this will be my last question, and then I'm going to leave you alone. Um, with Grishuk, like today, at some point, it felt like he has to be doing it on purpose. Like how much, how much time he's taking? I mean, you know, so how, how do you feel about that? Is he doing it on purpose or does he actually... Uh, does he actually really need so much time? Um, I think it depends. I think, uh, well, I think there are some time pressure addicts who actually literally have fun doing that and who actually do that on purpose. But uh, I think it's really case by case basis. So sometimes it's really because he's uh, looking at the position very deeply and comparing lines and uh, and uh, doing all of these kind of deep analysis of a certain situation. But sometimes it's really, it, it sometimes it also could be on purpose, like I know a few people, not as not as higher rated as Grishuk, let's say, but who I've heard from other people that they're actually just having fun, you know, living on that adrenaline, making the move with one second on the clock. That's just actually just fun for them, that they enjoy the game. They're not, they're maybe GMs of weaker level. They're not really professionals, but, um, you know, it just gives them joy to do that. And uh, to me, that's, yeah. that's right, a bit extreme, but... There are people who enjoy it. I mean, what to do? I mean. Thanks for uh, thanks for the insights. I'll uh, I'll mute myself for now. I may I may be back. Sounds good. Yeah. And meanwhile, we have this interesting game going on. I know on this guy here. found this move. E- I thought he was completely lost, and then he played this e5, and I was like, it's actually quite complicated. So. It's complicated, but that's okay. Now it's yeah. now it's winning. But yeah, actually, interestingly enough, the last two games were both. Uh, Smith and Morris, which changed into Exchange Slav, which I also play. So it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I a, do that a lot. That's, about them, it's, a, that's a funny. It's a funny transposition because they don't seem too related. But yeah. Yeah, but I mean, since I know both of them, I played Smith more as a kid, and I used to play, and I play Exchange Slav now. It's actually kind of funny that I I get this a lot, and then Blitz works very well. 
But anyway, it's funny that two games, exactly the same things happened, and uh, both games ended up really good for me. Okay, now it's time for a real challenge. Let's play this 2600 guy who has been... Oh, did he just... Uh, it looks like he left, unfortunately. That's too bad. Um, I hope he's back, because I was going to play him, but uh, I guess he left now. Uh, okay, well, you know what? Let's Let's do this. Let's play... Let's play this 2800 because we just played some low rated. So let's play the 2800 now. Yeah, if if you're that guy who was behind these two people, that 2600, I forgot your name. Come back, I'll make sure I I'll play you. So assuming you know that we can play before the whole thing ends, because now I'm gonna try to play some tougher guys because I just played some lower guys. So now I'm gonna really challenge myself so here we're playing against sergey rohmanov from uh, canada five minute game and it's an exchange swap but sometimes even that get again can get interesting especially if white plays c4 or if black plays c5 this could lead to something asymmetrical so <clears throat> yeah usually yeah, I think white and black is doing completely fine here. Okay, knight e2, knight f6. Now he can't go bishop g5 because I... Oh, he, wow, he, he he actually allows that? That's strange. Yeah, I guess he just blundered. A little bit surprising. Okay, so now I could castle probably a little here because it's still no threats. And then I can go bishop b6 or something. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a surprising blunder for a player of this caliber, but okay, I guess it happens to all of us sometimes. Um, okay, knight c3. Mm -hmm. If I go bishop b6, he can take on d5 actually, maybe. Because the point is if. Hmm. Interesting. If I go knight c6. Does he still take on d5? Huh, it's still a little complicated. Okay, you know what? Let's just go back. I, I should have gone back in that last move, I think. Oh, knight takes d5 doesn't work. Knight takes d5, or maybe it does work. Or does it? Knight d5, knight d5, bishop d8, knight e3. Knight e3, king g1, knight takes d1, bishop takes b6. Uh, knight takes b2. Okay, I'm up a pawn at least there. Bishop c5, rook e8. Okay, I'm winning a pawn, at the very least. Uh, knight d5, queen d5, bishop f6, bishop f5. Yeah, he does that. Oh, wait, bishop, knight d5, bishop h7, is that possible? Could be possible. But then I get three pieces for the queen, actually. So let's just not worry about it and do it. If he takes on h7, he takes on h7. I can also go king h8, I think. Bishop d8, knight e3. Yeah, he takes this, of course. Yeah, so can I go knight g2, king d2, bishop e3? No, that's too much. Can I go rook d8? Mm, okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, rook d8, queen c1, knight g2. Okay. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. But hmm, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, if, okay, so let's, let's compare it. If I go knight g2, king d2, bishop e3, okay, rook d8, knight g2, okay, knight g2, king d2 simply, I think doesn't work. Knight d1, bishop takes b6, knight takes b2. That's just not a pawn though, I don't, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll just take it. Yeah, I'm just gonna play it safe. Up a safe pawn with safe, healthy pawn. When when you have such a good choice, why why mess around? I mean, I wanted to play something more fun, but okay, this is, should just be a technical win. So no reason to not play it because this is just up a pawn with a better position because he has d3 is gonna be weak and this is just uh, very tough for him. Yeah, rookie eight. 
Right, see slips. Yeah, upper form and uh, better bond structure. What more can we expect from from life? Uh, Shiva five. Okay, here. Uh, okay, we should be six. Rook d eight. Uh, yeah, d eight. Uh, rook b three. Knight a five. And then knight c four. Yeah. Okay, it's completely winning. Of course, you'll play on, I think, but yeah, it's completely lost. Uh huh. Yeah, now I can play b5 also. It's he goes king e2, b4, rook c5. Mm, okay, that's less clear, I think. R knight c4, rook c4, rook d3, king c1, rook e3. Okay, that's. Just two pawns up. Bishop d3, rook d3, knight c4. Okay, I think I'll just I'll just do this. I will not overthink it. Because this is just two pawns up. Yeah, it should be very easy to win. So yeah, if you see something very clear cut, there is no reason to calculate some complicated lines because this is just, uh, should be pretty simple. Okay, uh, check, okay, two, okay, ruby seven, okay, that's unnecessary counterplay, I would say. Okay, king, uh, king e6, a four, Okay, let's go king d5. Let's activate the king. Yeah, you need the king to win the game. So, I'm gonna try to win the that pawn over there. Okay, king b4. Rook, rook d4, rook c4. Mm, okay, still a game. Still a game. Okay, so. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, let's play king b3 perhaps. King a3. Now I'm threatening rook c2. You can play this, but okay. Now, now there's no tricky knight that I have to worry about. Now it's just should be even simpler. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, maybe just maybe just g5. Okay. Should I just play g5? Maybe that's simplest. H5, rook h7. Takes, takes. Yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, that's simplest. If takes, king takes a4. You can play a5. I can't actually I missed a5, but okay, I can play b5 before. That should be. Yeah, it should be simple enough because his king is cut off. Yeah, kudos to him. He's fighting uh, pretty well, but okay, the position is should be pretty much winning. So yeah, b3, king b4. Yeah, now the rook has nowhere really to go. Yeah, and now king b3, king a2. Yeah, so now it's winning. Now it's easy. All right, so I was able to convert it. It's pretty happy. Yeah, so he's kind of just made a quick mistake. Um, all right, so let's play another 2800. Let's play some 2800. Let's try to play some people who are close to my level now and uh, just give myself some, some challenge. 
So Heisenberg from France. Good luck, Mr. Heisenberg. 87,000. Let's see if he's here, though. Um, doesn't look like he's here, unfortunately. Okay, let's wait 10 more seconds. Okay, there he is. Excellent. There he is. Because the goal is not to win every game. I want to see some, you know, you. I want you guys to see maybe me not winning a game because I think that will just be more fun. So that's why I'm trying to play some really challenging guys so that uh, uh, everybody gets a chance to play. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, this is roughly equal, I would say. No real problems here. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are slight problems. Okay, let's go here. Still don't see a big problem. C4, knight f6. And then castles, I guess. Okay. Yeah, just equal position. So I think the key will be how well I manage the clock. Yeah, so so far, of course, he's playing fine, but he's trying to spend some time here trying to figure out the best plan. And now I'm just going to try to play quickly so that I can, uh, if it's a time scramble, that I can try to come out on top. Okay, knight c2. So far, nothing special is happening. All right, I guess I'll just make a neutral move. Don't really see what else to do. Uh huh. Okay, let's play b6 so I can take with the pawn. Kind of like that one. All right, so now we're going to try to remaneuver the knight to a better square. I think you should have played knight d3 first, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, this is completely fine. This should be equalish. But let's try to see if I can grind this, this out. Yeah, so let's see. If, can I play a four here? It takes rook c4, rook b4. It's too risky. Let's play here first. Okay, if I play a4, I play a3. Uh, a3, rook b8 takes, check, rook g2. Hmm. So it's a bit risky, actually. Yeah, this might be a bad pawn in game. No, I think I have to play on the other side. I shouldn't play on the... He should try to play on the queen side, I think. I should try to play on the king side and hopefully make a pass pawn. Yeah, I think I chose the wrong plan in the beginning. Now I have to make a little bit of an adjustment. So maybe I'll just push my pawns a little bit. And uh, now, okay, okay, eight. Let's try to make it not so easy for him to make a passer. Okay, check. Check. Okay, two. Yes, yeah, five king d7, probably because I can't let the king get to b6, I think. If I hit c5, rook g2, king b5, rook h2, king b6. Slightly dangerous. Yeah, c5, king d7, yeah, he can't defend the pawns anyway, so probably should do that. I mean, maybe he's still okay, but looks precarious. Because I have a passed pawn now. King, king c5. Okay, I guess I'll just go here. Let's go here. Okay, now it's, it's a race. But I think I might be winning this one. My pawn is very far advanced. King g6 first, king f5. Now my king is coming to g3. And king f3. 
and I think it's not in time. Okay, so uh, is it so easy though? Wait, how do I win this? I can't take. King of three gives a check. Huh, okay, it's not so easy still. How do I win? Maybe like this, maybe I just make a second passer. Uh, maybe it's not winning. Maybe it's not winning. Ah, darn. Eh. I think I messed it up. Oh, eh. yeah, he held it. Yeah, I couldn't find the win. I thought I'm winning, but yeah. nice defense from my opponent in the end. So yeah, wasn't so easy. Okay, so we don't have a lot of 2800s in the wild. Okay, so let's play in order again. Let's play uh, against Renault now. 2065. Okay, so since I since I just had a challenging game, let's go back to playing a couple of slightly lower rated guys. Let's win some. Try to win some games. Yeah, it was a good game, good fight. I th I thought I'm gonna win. I had more time and everything, but. Yeah, I misplayed. I, I, might, I might have been winning, but I miscalculated. Uh, rogue game games are tricky, so what to do? It's okay. Yeah, this line of the English defense is very interesting and fun. Uh, Simon Williams recommends it in, like, I think, his DVDs or his video series. Uh, I think it's, this line is a lot of fun, very, very complicated. So. See how hand he handles this. Okay, take, 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 take. Okay, I think I'm not supposed to. I'm not able to do that. I think, but I think what I'm able to do is I can do this and Queen H5 if I remember correctly. But maybe I'm not remembering correctly. Or maybe it's Queen F6 actually. Yeah, I keep forgetting this particular line. It's annoying. Okay, let's just go Queen H5. I don't. I don't recall for sure. I think you can take on a five now. Uh, okay. 92, queen of three, rook of one. So what's happening in that case? Queen h5. Okay, that's one possibility. Another possibility is just to take on e4, take on e4, knight of six. Castles, knight g4, h4. Okay, I don't know. Just take it. This seems like a better option. Yeah, at this point I'm kind of out of my prep. I don't I don't remember for sure what I'm supposed to do. I'm just gonna sack some points and see what happens. Play for initiative. If he takes on me six, I'm just gonna castle. And hope for the best. All right, so this one I'll wait. I can take on h2 as well, right? I think I'll do that. Because I can also take on g3 with check. So I think that's, uh, I'm not sure if knight f4 was a good move. Queen e2. Uh, queen e2. Okay, maybe I'll just take it now. Now that I'm up a pawn, I can just take on a five. Play kind of sensibly.
yeah now this is just uh, yeah this is just extra pawn yeah now it looks like i've consolidated all right let's just do this i was thinking about the idea of sacking the exchange but i don't think it's worth it yeah so here my bishop will go to d6 protecting c7 bring the other rook from a8 to e8 and uh yeah my position is pretty safe and uh, this looks pretty good Yeah, he's uh, he's thinking about the move. It's not so not so easy for him here. Yeah, because I'm just gonna go rookie eight and uh, oh, he decides to bend the bishop, but that seems very risky because now I'm gonna have a lot of threats, a lot of initiative. Maybe it's okay in King D2, but um, yeah, okay, let's play here. Let's play here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the pawn on d6 is very safe. His bishop on b1 doesn't look very good. And uh, yeah, rook c7, I just play rook t5 probably. Uh, I'm going to give him the a7 pawn and take on d5. Mm, OK, let's take on d5. All right, and now I trade the rook. and. And this is now very safe, just up two points with very minimal compensation. So, yeah, now it's completely winning. Um, rook d8, h6, king f8, and uh, king e7, and yeah. Ah, okay, tricky, okay, 94. C4. Um, 96. Yeah, I feel like I'm almost mating him, but not quite. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, I don't see a mate. Okay, I'll just push the pawns, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's go here. Whatever. Yeah, okay. All right, next game. Good game. Uh, Renault. Let's play uh, next game. Okay, who do we have next? Cram next student. All right. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to play Kramnik himself now, but I think actually I wouldn't mind. It would be a very fun game. All right, Kramnik student from India. Good luck. All right, I have three D five E three. It's another one of my pet systems, which I quite like to play in a lot of my games. Okay, let's play Knight C three. Of course, D four is also possible. Transport him into the E three slot, but I'll just do this. I'll just do that. Like this and play here. Yeah, so he's just playing the semi slav Yeah, of course, he's completely fine. It's just a normal position for black. 
I think I should have taken on e5, by the way, then play knight b5. Yeah, I regret not doing that. I mean, maybe it's still okay. Uh, you can go bishop b4, a3, bishop a5. Yeah, I don't. I wish I would have just taken on e5. Okay, well, this I'm kind of more happy about. Because that bishop on d6, is it's very nice to trade that off. It's very nice to trade that piece off. And then just go queen c3, rook c1. Yeah, just have some initiative on the c file. And now I like my position. I think he should have kept the bishop somehow if he could. Now I like my position. Yeah, rook c2, rook c1 would be my plan, probably. Queen d6. Maybe at some point I need to, that knight on d2, I need to improve. Ideally, I would want to get it on b6 or c5 at some point. So I would, at some point, my plan would be rook c1, knight b1, knight c3, knight a4. But let's see if I can, if I can do it. But okay, meanwhile, it's good to get the rooks in the game as well, so. Uh, he's, uh, but he's attacking me, so it's not so easy. Maybe I won't have all the time in the world for all that. But mm -hmm. interesting, interesting. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna stop that. Don't really like the pawn. I don't really want to let the pawn get to h3. Uh, in general, I'm not a big fan of allowing the pawns to get too close near my king. I've lost some games because of that in my life, so better to avoid that. Because I don't think that bishop takes h3 is that scary in most cases. So he needs to still go queen f5, queen g5, and then I can go king f1. So it doesn't seem that scary. I, for example, king f1, and I don't see his uh, next move. Okay, here I'm just going to take that. Queen g5, king f1. And then go bishop h2. I don't see a, a killer plan for him yet. Knight h5. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, let's play rook c7. I, got his, I still don't see his, his threats. I mean, he can try knight g3. That he can do. The question is, is it that scary? See, knight b1. Switch two. Mm. Okay, I still have to be careful. Maybe I should take on h5. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of that knight. I mean, what the heck? Get rid of it. Six. Okay, time to improve this knight, I think. Okay, he cannot take twice, I don't think. Okay, he does this. Uh, okay, let's try this. Uh, can you do look at two? Mm. Okay, I'm just, I know this is not the, the right idea, but at this point I'm just flagging. Yeah, I mean, I think the position was not so clear, but he spent a lot of time <laughs> figuring all this out, so what to do. Okay, let's play some three-minute games, get some lower rates, try to play them quickly, and, and then we'll hopefully get back to playing some higher rates. Yeah, Kramnik student, yeah, you played a good game. It's very good fight. I think you had a good, interesting position. It was an interesting strategical game. It's just 
so bad it was a three minute game and uh, the game gone by pretty quick pretty quickly so but position wise you played in quite well all right bishop d3 that's a little clumsy for sure um i know that there's bishop d3 after d4 that's a ooh, f3 wow that's that's interesting doesn't seem too good <clears throat> Yeah, well, just gonna develop my pieces. And castle, okay, knight a4 makes sense. Trying to castle. All right, now my threat is to trap this bishop on d3. He sees it. Okay, so let's see what to do. Uh, it just feels like I have to have uh, something very strong here, but I don't see. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's. Okay, I guess I just have to develop normally. Nothing. Nothing really is winning here. So. Um. <laughs> c4 okay then i think i will that i think i will take. if he takes with a pawn he blunders with bishop e5 and now i'm attacking the bishop on d3 and the uh, rook on a1 so this looks like a blunder yeah okay, just take queen take d3 because i can take with the knight He should have played knight b2 so i can take take queen d3 and then at least he can take out of six but i still think it's lost but it was a bit more messy but this seems very simple although okay it's still some calculation required but queen g6 <laughs> d4 bishop takes h2 and uh okay it's still okay that 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 can't be good I mean, take it yeah d4 should have been tried at least to make it messy now it's just a simple piece up without any any problems yeah oh, okay queen d4 wins another piece always pay attention to loose pieces very important rule in chess and he resigned he could have tried rook f6 knight h5 to try to go desperate but he decided to call it a game all right uh let's play now chassis boy chassis boy all right good luck chassis boy chassis boy from canada knight f3 Is he here? All right, let's wait for five, 10 more seconds. Ah, sadly, we have to abort this one. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's play a three, two game. We haven't had one of those today. So let's, uh, let's play a game with increment right now. Okay. Mr. Hossein Kazi Tabata Bey from Iran. So there's uh, another player, Grandmaster, named Tabata Bey uh, from, from Iran. I think over 2,600 FIDE. Um, so definitely strong name. All right, let's see if he's here. Is he also not here? See, I told you guys, uh, don't run away. Look where you are in line and uh, try to be ready when you, when you might be close to the next in line. But you didn't listen, so I have to abort now, unfortunately. All right, who is next? Hungry Eagle. I think Bateman we might have already played today, so let's play. We're going to have to skip Bateman. 
going to play for Mr. Hungry Eagle. Hungry Eagle from United Kingdom. Yay, he's here. Got a game. Perfect. We got a game. All right, so let's see what he does. This time we got e6, knight c3. I've had many games like this as well. Bishop e7, b3, pretty typical. And then the main move is knight takes d5 here. e takes d5, I think, gives white a pretty comfortable position from what I'm aware. So I'm usually very happy to see e takes d5 in, in this structure. Knight takes d5 could lead to, in, to some very interesting sharp positions with queen b1, h4, and all this beautiful stuff. In fact, when the line became more passionate, fashionable and popular when Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin played it with with White against Vichy Anand and the candidates and won a very nice game in 2016. And then the game, this line became more popular, Knight of 3, 3 and yeah, but this is definitely good for White. I have an I I have pressure against the isolated pawn and he doesn't really have that much that much counterplay. He can't go d4 here, I don't think, because of knight a4. And he loses a pawn. I'm threatening also knight takes d5. So he sensibly moved the bishop away, but still I think white should be better here. Because he has some problems dealing with some of his weak targets, in particular d5 and uh, b7. So... Yeah, it's kind of a difficult spot for my opponent. Yeah, bishop c8. It's kind of a sad move to play. Now I'm just going to <coughs> threaten knight takes b7 again and apply some more pressure. <coughs> Yeah, this is kind of why it's better to take with the knight, because in this particular case, white's doing very well with pressure against the isolated pawn. So, rook c8. Okay, I'm just going to take it. Take on a bit. Take on d5. Next move. And now, white is up two pawns and has a very healthy structure, much better pawn structure. So, and potentially some, some attack on the king. He has good pieces, but that's about it. <laughs> All right, so he just resigned. Okay, so let's uh, see. Bateman we already played, so we're going to skip Bateman. We're going to play Magna, Leader, Maxi. Next game. Okay, good game, Hungry Eagle. Good luck to Magma, Leader, Maxi from United States. Okay, this time I'm black. Okay, and he plays b3, so I'm just going to play e5. The normal reply against the b3. Knight c6. Yeah, I'm just gonna play. Uh, okay, let's try. Let's try this line. I think this is what Sam Shanklin played. Yeah, and I, I think it was this and then e4, if I remember correctly. So let's see. Hmm. D3. Okay, should I just take? Yeah, probably. I don't remember, was I supposed to play through here or later? Okay, whatever. It's it's done too. Okay, 
We have bishop b4. Castles. Let's try Oh, I think I just blundered this bishop f6. Okay, whatever. Not a big deal, hopefully. I didn't really intend on allowing it. I'm actually trying to set up a cunning trap. I want to trap this bishop on, on d5. With c6, d5, but he saw it. So kudos to him for spotting that. Yeah, I mean, on one hand, I might be better because of the better dark square control, but my king is the king structure is a bit compromised. So that's I would say position is double edged here. Now I think I want to go bishop d6, c6, f5, knight g6, and uh, just play this position. Yeah, let's play knight g6. Uh, he can play queen c2. Yeah, I don't know if I like it that much, actually. It's okay. Equalish, maybe. Yeah, c6, bishop d6, just normal, slow maneuvering game. Nothing too exciting happening here. Both sides are just trying to set up their pieces. Knight b1, okay, that's sensible. Okay, now it's time to play f5. He should probably play g3, not let me play f4. I think I'll play a5. Oh, wow, he lets me play f You know, I'll do it. I'm not going to be asked twice. Because otherwise, I'll give him a chance to play g3. And I don't even care about losing h7, honestly speaking. Okay, that's fine. Take with the f1. Okay, 95, but... This doesn't worry me too much. Queen g5, let's say. Takes, rook takes. Knight d3, bishop f5. That's kind of important. Yeah. E4, okay, F3. As you guys already know, I really like the pawn wedge. So he has to play G3, I think. And uh, then I'll play Bishop D6, trying to get rid of that knight, trying to mate him. I don't know if I'll succeed, but it looks very promising. <clears throat> takes takes the queen g4. <clears throat> uh, okay. I guess he has to play knight d2 in some sometimes. Maybe he's still defending, but at least it looks very dangerous. Yeah, maybe he can get away with knight d2 and sack the the piece that's the only defense I see, but I still don't think that it should be that great. But maybe it's okay for him because my king is slightly weak, also. But okay, at least I'll make him spend some time. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's it's not so easy, huh? Oh, he takes this one. Wow, I thought I thought he should play e6. I really. Now I think it's should not be that good for him. Yeah, I think e6 was critical. If takes on d5, maybe queen c7 and trying to make it messy. Or maybe it was queen b2. Yeah, I think he needed to attack my king because now... 
or maybe I'm no, okay, I'm not missing something. It still does rook d1. Okay, maybe this is also okay for him. Yeah, it's hard to yeah, it's hard to evaluate this actually. And yeah, maybe I should not have gone for all this actually. Because this is a bit dangerous. Yeah, chess is a hard hard game. Sometimes evaluating these material imbalances could be very complicated. I mean, who knows if I even did the right thing of going for all this, these complications. Okay, I guess I'm gonna sack this pawn as well. Okay, I'm probably gonna win on time, but I'm not sure if my position is that great actually. It's just unclear. But does this, this does work? Rook g8 it takes rook d. I thought he I thought his idea was rook d rook d1 was no, it wasn't working anyway, because yeah, okay, but this is too slow. Yeah, okay, he just ran out of time basically. But yeah, the game was the game was kind of interesting. Okay, so I think John Tar Tadros is next. So let's play John Tadros. Good luck, John Tadros from Switzerland. All right, we're going to wait 10 seconds. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, what to do? Yeah, you guys gotta be here. Otherwise, you're gonna miss your opportunity to play. Okay, let's play Cobra. How much we have left? We have like roughly maybe 30 more minutes left or something. Yeah, something along those lines. So let's try to play mostly three three minute games now because uh, because five minute games do take a while and we've already played quite a lot of them. So in order to get, get more games in, we'll try to play mostly three game, three minute games now. Okay, knight c3. Queen b3, I think I got a very good version of the London system here. Uh, maybe I should have played queen b3 first, but still, I think my position is decent. Okay, uh, he's giving me that pawn, but maybe it's poisoned pawn. Or is it poisoned? Maybe it's healthy. Because my if rook b8, I was gonna take and then go c5. So I was thinking maybe it's okay for me. Maybe it was just a bluff. Okay, I'm winning a second one. Generally speaking, if I don't see a refutation and I, if I'm not that much behind in development, I'm going to take a pawn and you have to prove me the compensation. So you got to be careful. If you're going to give me the pawn, that there is compensation of some sort, either uh, short term or long term. Okay, 94. Uh, let's see. 94, okay, that's a decent move. Okay, I think it's time to bring the queen back to defense. Bring it to a3 where it guards everything.
queen a3 yeah he's now <coughs> realizing he doesn't have <coughs> very much compensation for the pawn so now it's more or less just uh, losing for for black and he's also getting low on time unfortunately so should be winning in short order okay so that's uh exchange sack but doesn't really help because i'm just simply castling knight b8 okay but let's take queen a4 stopping knight c6 A4 <clears throat> takes take from B1, just simplifying. Okay, let's take that as well and go T5. Six. All right. Yeah. So this game was gone well, well for me out of the opening because uh, I was able to win a pawn and he didn't get that much compensation. Okay, Julio. Uh, so good, good game, Cobra. Okay. Next game is uh, Julio from uh, Colombia. Good luck, Julio. Ju 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 Zero six. Okay, knight of three, as always. All right, let's see if he's here. He might not be here. Okay. Okay, I guess where he's not here. So, all right. Uh, new game. Let's see. Ama Lope. All right, from Spain, good luck, Amal Lope. Okay, he's here, ready to go. That's good news. Let's play a French, Let's see what he does. Okay, uh, this time it's a pretty normal King's Indian attack. Let's try this, this system, Let's see six. I've played this recently in the Pro Chess League match, which unfortunately against Petrosian, which unfortunately the match did not go our way and did not this game did not go well for me. But I think I got a fine position out of the opening. But here I think he made a mistake. He just, I think it was in the form. So he played a bit imprecisely. He needed to play five first if he wanted to play with knight of one. So he was, I think he made a mistake. Because now everything is covered and he's just uh, losing a pawn, I think, here. For a very weak compensation. He's playing quickly, but my position is very comfortable. Maybe I can even play F6, can I? Yeah, probably. C4. Okay, I can just take, take, take. Uh, yeah, probably that's the best option. I mean, why not? Two bishops. Just very nice position. Okay, I needed to defend D4. Okay, so now my idea is to play g5 next move, trapping the knight. And I think I will do that. Yeah, so now it's game over. <laughs> All right, good game, I'm a Lope. Yeah, unfortunately, knight of one was premature. So let's play now Mr. Battery Bob, 3-2 game. 
We haven't played any three, two games today. So let's take the opportunity to play one game with increment. Good luck, battery Bob, Bob from Norway. So this is with increments. So there's not gonna be any flaggings involved. Uh, I mean, you can still lose on time, but not like one can flag in a completely normal position. I mean, I mean, in a completely lost position, drawn or lost position. That's that's what I meant. Okay, d3. So I'm curious, can I play d5? Okay, I probably should just play, yeah, should play d5 here. I think this is already very comfortable for me. Uh, okay, that's kind of what I, what I expected. Knight g4 or knight d7? Knight g4, d4, c5. Okay, knight d7 is good. c5. Okay, I need to strike well before he consolidates. So I'm playing very aggressively here. Knight c6. Yeah, he's, he's consolidating. What can I say? Not so easy. What to do? What to do here? I don't really want to. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Something is not right with my position. I just don't see a move. Hmm. Takes, takes bishop c5, knight d5, knight d5, knight takes c6, bishop takes. Yeah, I don't really want to take that. Okay. Oh, that was a mouse step, by the way. I, I actually wanted to take on d4. Hmm. Okay. But he should, he could have taken on d5. I don't know why he didn't. Yeah, it was strange. I wanted to take and go bishop c5, but I mouse slipped. But okay, I mean, it actually turned out reasonable. Now it's just going to be a, a game. He needs to play something like knight c1 or knight g1. And then I go knight a6, knight c7, defending d5. And it's just going to be a position where I play on the queen side. Knight a6, b5, knight a6, knight c7, b5, b4. And he plays on the king side. So it's going to be a game like that. But first, we need to complete our development, I think. But somehow I don't like it because he, king side attacks are usually stronger than queen side attacks. Yeah, so this this one went wrong for me. Something went wrong. Maybe d5 was not the, the right place. Maybe d5 was premature. Maybe I needed to play c5. Yeah, so definitely something to learn from this game. Yeah, I don't like okay, I'll just go g6 actually. Maybe I can cancel the queen side. Yeah, so far he's playing really well for for an eighteen hundred for sure. Um, I mean, he's playing well in general. So, first guy who really created me massive problems in the opening. So kudos to to him for playing so well. Yeah, I'm just trying to survive here. For sure, I'm, I'm worse. Thank <laughs> you. 
of course, it will be a dream scenario if you take Sunny Six and I take with the pawn and we trade queens, but I don't think he will do that. Okay, I'll still happily trade queens here. Okay, A6. Yeah, I'm not sure if he should do that, although I still think he's better with F5. If he takes in place of five, I still like his position. Okay, now at least I can play a five, maybe. Now, if he doesn't play g4, then I'll play h5 and I'll try to stabilize things. He should play g4, then I'll take, take, and play king b8. Or maybe bishop h6 first. Yeah, this, this is... This is manageable, but he still has ideas, b3. But okay, at least I I think I'm relatively safe. Okay, now my plan is to put the bishop on b4. Oh, wow. This is just a mouse slip. He wanted to take on c4. But if he was going to take on c4, at least I have the d5 square for the knight. So this wasn't such a such so bad anymore. So at least I think that the worst is, ahead of, is behind me. But still, this was a very tough game. Looks like I'll be able to convert it now, but it was very unpleasant opening in the from the beginning, actually. So kudos for my opponent for really creating me some problems. Knight f6. It's still not completely easy. Knight c1. Okay, let's take that. All right, so he flagged, yeah. But no, this was a tough game. Good game, Battery Bob. Yeah, if not that mouse slip, the game was still very much in doubt. Okay, uh, from now on, I'm only going to play three minutes and lower. So since we have a lot and i am challenging the first title player of today let's play the i am let's play some let's try to find some title players three minute game to really make it fun so we have a three thousand level i am lars oscar haug from norway i actually i know who that is um uh, i think i've heard the name before so yeah should be very interesting i think he played for norway gnomes and approach chess league, if I remember correctly. So, should be a very interesting game. And let's play a very solid system this time. Let's play the Rubenstein French. And let's try to, let's try to win the game and get back to 3,100. All right, so let's see how you're supposed to play this. Um, okay, I'm just taking light of six. Okay, so let's take it, bishop, uh, yeah, maybe bishop c5, is it? Yeah, to try to provoke knight b3. Oh, he goes here, interesting. Okay, so let's still play bishop c5, castles. a3, okay, let's play a5, not allow any b4s. Okay, b3, let's see. Uh, let's see what's happening after knight d5. Okay, let's try it. If queen e4, f5, I think it's good for me. <clears throat> it's a three minute game, 3 0, so I have to play fast. So, this is really kind of more about entertainment rather than instructional because it's going to be, it's going to come down to be a very much a dog fight. So, who knows what will happen. Okay, I got two bishops, but his position is still very, he has very good pieces, so that's a little bit annoying. I go bishop d7. Still not easy, huh? What if I play a5, queen e2, is that good? I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. 
Yeah. Bishop d4. Can I take on a3? Or is it too much? You can sack the exchange. Uh, it looks like I can get away with it, but I don't see like a refutation. Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Who cares? If it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> okay, rook d1 doesn't seem so scary. Okay, let's play f65. But now my time situation, so I have to be care mindful of my time at this point. But at least my moves are easy. E5, bishop e6. So far, I don't see a big, powerful idea for him. So at least, if I can survive, I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a pawn. So that's the good news. And I have two bishops. And I have two bishops. So this is very good news for me. Knight d2. I play f5. He goes queen d5. Oh, wow. Yeah, he goes queen d5. Yeah. Okay, bishop e4. C3. D3, bishop c5. Okay. Takes, 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 and takes on c4. Oh, I could play a4. Maybe a4 is better. Or rook b8. Is, yeah, it's a lot of choices here. At least I have a good time situation now. Bishop b6. What's his idea? If I play a4, what's his point? Don't see his idea. Let's just play it. We're going to be down to the wire this game. We need to make sure I don't flag. Look, take say four. Knight d6. Knight d6. Okay. Okay, let's play rook. Okay, eight. Queen takes b7, wait. Can I just take that? I think so. Okay, that's probably a blunder. Okay, maybe it's not, but still need to still need to be careful here. Okay, one doesn't work. Okay, bishop b4. Bishop b4. C3, bishop a3. Still a bit complicated, but I, I think I have everything under control. Uh, or do I? Wait, I don't think. Uh, yeah, was, wasn't rook d8 winning actually? The, the, my rook on a4 was hanging actually. Yeah, I think actually he could have. Oh, no, no, it wasn't because there was a mate. I forgot. There was mate. Okay, what to do now? Okay, bishop a3. Have to play quickly. Have to play very quickly. Queen e8. Rook check. Okay, I have to go here. Oh, oopsies. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, what to do? <laughs> I kind of played a bit dirty in the end. At this point, it was just a matter of uh, <laughs> playing very quickly. So I kind of hustled him a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. Our, let's play Ar Aragnon, another I am. This time, slightly lower rated I am. Yeah, this was, a, this was just a dog fight. What to do? I mean, in the end, of course, I knew I'm not playing best moves, but I was purely playing on the on the clock. But what to do? You gotta do what you gotta do, right, to win the game. So I was a little bit like I said, it was gonna be a dog fight where I'm gonna come down to the wire, and it did. So at least you guys had some fun. All right, now we got Aragnon from India. Who's that? Oh, but Mini Root, that's, uh, I know who that is as well. That's uh, <clears throat> one of the top female players in, in India. 
So quite a strong player and uh, played in very experienced as well. So should be an interesting game. So far, she's playing very well, solidly. She did play a very interesting F5, which is, of course, it's double-edged because it gives up the E5 square, but it can also lead to potential attacking chances if, if it works out very well. <laughs> they got knight f4, knight d3, knight e5. I always feel like these positions are slightly easier for white to play than black, but <laughs> let's see if she proves me wrong. So she was able to develop some attack. So it will be it will be another very interesting game for sure. <laughs> okay, how to take it? It's a good question, but I'm gonna make a quick decision because it's a three minute game. What to do? Cannot spend too much time because even if I spend a lot of time, it will still be hard to decide. So therefore it's better to just play what intuitively feels better in that case in a three minute game because it's something that I wouldn't be able to calculate probably even if I spent five minutes precisely. So yeah, I'm not sure how much exact time we, we still have, but maybe one or two more games we still have time for. So. Alex, it's Pascal. Yeah, you can play one or one more after this one sounds good. One more after this one? Okay, that sounds good, yes. I'll try to look for a higher rated guy uh, in that case. And then a, a little bit after Alex's uh, banter, I have my after show recap uh, of the day. If you guys want to listen to that, that will be at uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, uh, I guess 7 o'clock in London, 8 o'clock in uh, Central Europe. And I'll let you finish. I'll mute myself again. Yeah, uh, yeah. so it's a very interesting game. If 91, you, she wants to go to T3, so yeah, who knows what this all is. But okay, let's let's take an F6 and see how she deals with that. Okay, you could take with the Rook, probably. Oh, take with the Knight? No, I think that's a blunder, though, because I just take on B7. I mean, you can play Rook B8, but that's just bad, down two points. Yeah, so, but I think if, if she takes with the, if she took with the rook, it was not so clear, actually. Maybe she was, she could have even been better. I don't know. So, yeah. But now I think I'm consolidating with uh, rook c2, and uh, now everything is kind of under control. Please, so it seems. Yeah, but I don't think that will help very much. <laughs> yeah, this should be a technical win, I think. Even objectively speaking, it should be a win, even if, but there's also, of course, the, the time situation, which, which is, uh, which is going to be the deciding factor. But but even objectively, I think this is uh, winning step by step. Maybe g4 should be played. Yeah, and then I would move the king over. OK, so one more guy we need to play. Now let's see who. It would be probably a three-minute game. So let's see we have we have a very high-rated challenge here. Who's the highest rated we have here? Okay, so we have, but that's unfortunate, a five-minute game. We have El Bassem. That's a five-minute game, so I want to play a three-minute game. So let's try uh, Arlimin. Yeah, you're the lucky one. Uh, you're going to be my last game for today. 
assuming it's not going to be aborted. So good luck, Aramin from Germany. That's uh, Aaron Matthias. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, yeah, should be interesting. So, so far I've played all games with starting with IC3. This time I'll start with uh, V3. But it, very often it just transposes. Okay, he's trying to do the same thing, interestingly. Okay, this time I'll play bishop d3. Let's see if, let's see if he plays differently. c5. I, I don't really like c5 in these positions, actually, for black. It reminds me of that earlier game I played today. I think that it's supposed to be just good for white. Queen e2, rook d1, bishop e6. I think this is... This is oh, let's take that. Let's play against these hanging pawns and then play rook d1. Now I'm threatening to take an e4, so I'm kind of stopping. But the thing is, he's playing quickly, so it seems like he's an experienced uh, blitz player. That's why I'm very high rated. So I have to watch my clock, obviously. I think my position is, is better, but yeah, queen c4, I think he might have missed that. That was my hope that he would play that move, actually. And then I make him go back, I think, rook f8. And then I'll go rook d2, rook d1, and uh, apply some pressure. Yeah, I think white is, uh, is better. Okay, he decided to check me first. Okay, let's see what to do now. And g4 is kind of fun, actually. But that's a little... Eh, you know, whatever. Eh, no, I don't... I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, let's just play a waiting move. See what he does. I want to make sure I finish on a good note, play a good game, so let's try to focus. Um, I take four. Yeah, now I'm threatening knight c6. It's kind of a very nasty move for him to deal with. Yeah, so he defends it. Now I'll apply some pressure on the pawn on c5. And I'm also threatening bishop takes c5, maybe, maybe not. Or to say, kick f8, x1, yeah, bishop d6, bishop c5, I guess, king d8. Okay, so, uh, so tricky. Okay, what about if knight c5, though? And then knight a6, yeah, that should be safe. Yeah, that's that's good for white. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. I just stay here because I can recapture. Yeah, and he decided to just resign, although he could have still kept playing, but um, so say six and should be five, but he has no time, so he decided not to, not to continue, understandably so. All right, thanks everybody for playing today. Hope you guys all enjoyed my games and, and my stream. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to play every single one of you. I, I unfortunately, I don't really remember very well who I've played uh, this time or who I've played last time. So, in, if you guys did not get a chance to play me, make sure you guys try to challenge me earlier in my stream. So, because usually what I try to do is I try to play people who uh, challenge me earlier. Of course, I make some exceptions here and there, but in general. If you challenge me earlier and if you don't step away and uh, you'll most likely get a chance to play me so that's one piece of advice if you didn't get a chance to play me today make sure you challenge me earlier all right well thanks a lot thanks a lot alex this is pascal again and uh yeah we'll see you all a little bit later we have the after show in about in just over a half hour and then we also have a workshop with uh, Sam Shanklin, which should be pretty fun. So thanks again, Alex.
yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye.